What's up my friends and welcome back to my CS2 skin making tutorial. I'm still Viper, you're still you and we're still recreating my Nova Relic skin. In the last video we discussed the needed resources and tools to start your skin creation journey. We also finished creating the textures of the Nova Relic skin. If you haven't watched the video then please do so because I'll be assuming that you did. In this video we will continue creating the Relic skin and this time we'll engrave the weapon with some cool designs created by yours truly. But before we do that, let's look at the stock for a moment. As you can see, the cut between the two materials is quite sudden and doesn't look realistic. It would look better if there was an edge between the two textures. So, let's fix that by drawing a narrow gap between the stock and the rest of the body. And for that, let's head to the texture paint tab. In order to be able to draw, you need to have an image which will contain our drawings. In this section here, we can see all the images that we have per material. We're currently on the metal material and so far we only have the wood mask image. If we click on the plus sign, we get a list of the image types that we can create. For example, if we choose the base color, everything we paint will simply color the texture. For now, what we need is an image to create bumps, so let's choose bump. In the dialog, set the size of the image to be 4096 by 4096. This is the resolution that you should always work with when you create CS2 skins. You can quickly set both values to 4096 by clicking on the width field and dragging down to the height and then you can either write the value or multiply 1024 by 4. Let's keep the current gray color and click OK. Let's go back to the shader tab to set some things up. We can see that a new image texture node and a new bump node have been created for us. Make sure that the nodes are connected to the normal input of the principal shader. We want to use the new bump image to create engravings on both the metal and wooden textures. So far it's only connected to the shader of the metal texture. So let's connect it to the wooden texture as well. Click on the wood node and press tab to get inside. Because the wood node is a group node, we have an input node inside, which enables us to connect other nodes from the outside. The way to do that is to connect the input node to the destination. In our case, it's the normal input of the shader. However, the normal input is already occupied, so what we can do is to connect the node to the normal input of this bump node. Let's bring the input node closer and connect it. Press tab again to get out and now we see that the wood node has a normal input field. Connect the bump node to the normal field. And now when we draw on the weapon, both textures will be affected. If nothing is getting drawn, then make sure that the metal bump image is selected. I'll change the color to black because I want all of my drawings to be engraved. If I choose white, the drawings will look like they're extruding outwards. Okay, so we've done so many steps just so that we can draw. I know it might feel like a lot, but when you get used to it, this process won't take more than a few seconds. Anyway, as we saw a moment ago, we're ready to start drawing. Let's go down to the stroke section so that we'll choose how to draw. If you click on the stroke method, you'll find a group of ways of drawing. The main ones that I use are the space method, which lets us to draw freestyle, and the line method, which creates perfect lines. However, for the border gap, we'll go with the curve option. So this method will let us create a Bezier curve, which is basically a path with nodes where we can control their location and how curved they are. First, we need to create a new curve by pressing the new button. You can give it a unique name, but since we are creating just one curve, I'll leave it as it is. In order to create a node, you press CTRL and the right mouse button. If you hold the right mouse button and drag, that will make the path curved. You can change the location of the nodes either by clicking on the node with the right mouse button and move the node, or by pressing G and moving the mouse. Don't move the view or the model while you draw because the path will not move with it. In order to apply the path as a drawing, you press enter. So now we know how curves work. We want to draw the curve so that it covers the entire border, which includes the left and right sides, as well as the top and bottom, and we'll do that in a single stroke. For that, we need to play around with some settings. Let's start with the falloff section. The normal falloff value decides the angle of faces at which the drawing will start fading away. That means if we have 80 degrees, then the faces at the top and bottom of the weapon won't get any of the curve drawn on it. So let's disable this checkbox. Now we go down to the options section. 
The occlude and back face culling values tell Blender to apply the drawing only on the faces that are directly under the brush. This means when these values are checked, the other side will not be affected. So let's disable both values so that we'll be able to draw on both sides at the same time. Ok, now we're ready. I'll lower the radius of the brush to something small since we're looking for a narrow gap. You can resize the brush either by pressing F and moving the mouse left and right or by using the radius value above. I'll set the radius to 3 and zoom in on the border as much as I can. Remember, you can't change the view while creating the curve, so have that ready before you start. Anyway, enough talking, let's start drawing for God's sake. I'll carefully start putting nodes on the border. By the way, you can delete nodes by pressing the delete button on the keyboard. Ok, this looks good. Let's hit enter and see what we get. Now we have the narrow gap between the two textures and the cut between them is clearer. In the texture paint tab on the left we can see that there is a new black line. Now pay attention because this is super important. The image currently only exists in Blender and needs to be saved on the file system. However, it's not enough to save the Blender session. We need to save the image separately. To do that, press Alt S. Ctrl S saves the Blender session and Alt S saves the image. To save as, press Alt Shift S. So now the hard part is behind us and we're familiar with how the drawing process works so from now on things should go smoothly. Let's continue creating bumps on the weapon and for now we'll add the dots on the lower parts of the sides. For that, I will set the radius of the brush to something like 8 pixels, then go to the stroke section and set my stroke method to be line. Also I'll increase the spacing value because with 10% spacing the line will be continuous like so. So I'll set it to something like 150%. I'll keep the color black since I want bumps to go inside and not extrude outside. In order to draw, we click on the left mouse button and drag to where we want the line to stop. If we press ALT, the angle of the line will snap at increments of 45 degrees when we move the line. So I'll hold ALT to make sure that my lines are parallel and release. Let's save the image. It's a good practice to do that after every modification you make. If we look at the left side, we'll see that many lines of dots were added, more than what we wanted. The extra lines were created because we disabled the occlude and backface culling checkboxes. So now the sides have the lines as well as everything inside between the two areas. If you don't care too much, you can leave them as they are, but personally I prefer to keep everything clean so I'll erase them. Unfortunately Blender doesn't have a good way to erase drawings, so the way I do it is by modifying the image in GIMP. So I'll open the image in GIMP. The way I erase is by painting over whatever it is I want to delete with the background color. So I'll use the color picker to get the background color. Currently we have many dots, so in order to make sure that we're deleting the unnecessary ones, we go back to Blender and go to the UV editing tab and choose the faces we drew on earlier. We see that these two areas are the ones that we want to keep, so I'll paint over everything else and export when we're done. A very important note, close the GIMP session after exporting. We'll be modifying the metal bump image more, so if you accidentally export the image of this session again after modifying the image, then you'll lose your new drawings. I'm talking out of experience and I still get nightmares about previous accidents like these. After you export, reload the image in the texture image node and if we go back to the texture paint tab, you can see that the extra dots are gone. Again, it's unfortunate that Blender doesn't have a better way. If anyone knows of a better method, please share it in the comments. Anyway, let's move on. Let's engrave more stuff to the skin. I've made several designs for the relic skin. 
I hear you asking, Viper, how did you create these cool shapes? The answer is using Inkscape. It's another free and open source tool that I use. With Inkscape, you can create vector drawings which can be resized without any loss of quality. It's the free and open source equivalent to Adobe Illustrator. I'll add the link for downloading Inkscape in the video description. I'll start by engraving the wooden stock with this design. However, before I do that, I want to create an alpha image that will make the engraving smoother when applied. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. For now, I'll open the image with GIMP and select the image with the Select by Color tool and delete everything but without removing the selection. I'll change the foreground color to white and now I'll go to the Gradient tool. Click on this square here and select Foreground to Transparent. Set the shape to one of the shape types and apply the gradient. You can control how fast the gradient goes from white to transparent using the offset value as well as with the pointer on the gradient line. I think this looks good so I'll apply the gradient and export the image. Now we need to add the image to Blender. For that we search for the texture section and expand it. Change the mapping value to stencil then click on new. I'll rename the texture to wood engraving and click on the last icon which will take us to the settings of the image. Here we can load our image by clicking on open and choosing the file we exported a moment ago. Now we can see our image but it's repeated and we don't want that. So we go down to the mapping section and instead of repeat we choose clip or extend. To be honest I'm not sure what's the difference between these two. Let's go back to the active tool section. Under the texture section there are several settings that enable us to control the stencil better. Currently the design looks a little bit squished. We can modify the aspect of the shape using the X and Y values of the size. I'll increase the Y value a little bit to make the shape look more circular. We can also control the stencil using the right mouse button. Pressing the right mouse button alone will move the stencil around. With shift you can resize it and with control you can rotate it. I can also set the exact angle here. I'll also enlarge the cursor. Make sure that the stroke method is set to space and the spacing value is 10% and start drawing. Very nice. As you can see there's a gradual depth in the engraving and that's because of the alpha image we created in GIMP using the gradient. If we used an alpha image with solid white color, the engraving would have looked like this. There's nothing wrong with it looking like that if that's what you're looking for. But when there's a gradual depth in the bump, it makes it look a little bit deeper. In any case, we have a few more shapes to add to the bump image and we're done. Now I'll apply these designs on the sides. I already created their alpha images as I did with the previous design. The process now will be exactly the same, but before I begin, I will enable the occlude and backface culling checkboxes because now we want each side to get a different drawing. So I'll create a new texture. We'll name it Metal Engraving and go to its settings. I'll click on Open and choose the image and set the mapping to Clip. It's too squished, so I'll increase the Y value to something large, like 20. And now it fits much better, so I'll start drawing. And as you can see, since we enabled the two checkboxes, now we have the drawing only on the left side. So let's do the right side real quick. New texture, metal engraving small, settings, open the image. Set mapping to clip. It's way too long, so I'll set Y to 10. Resize if needed and draw. And with the exact same process I did the rest of the bumps. 
It would be a waste of time to do all of them in the video since the process is exactly the same. And of course we should never, ever forget to save the image on which we draw. By the way, you can also save by clicking on image and choosing save or save as. Anyway, now our skin is nice and ready. In the next video, we'll see how to bake the maps which will serve as our skin when we upload them to the game. Until then, take care and see you soon.